Hi everyone, STF Field Manager Jake Henry here, and today I wanted to make a little tree forensics video. We've done a couple of these before, trying to figure out what's going on with trees using some of the hints that are available to us. Uh, so today we're looking at this loquat tree here, or an Areobatria japonica, uh, that has died. Uh, this is a tree here in one of the parks in Ardsley Park. Uh, it's a pretty good size loquat tree, uh, so it's really unfortunate that it died. So we're going to look at some signs on the tree and see what happened to it. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with loquat trees, these are a very popular fruit tree here in the southern United States. Uh, it is non-native, but it's not invasive, so it's a good thing. We're not too worried about it. Um, really popular fruit tree has these tiny little yellow orange fruits on them uh, delicious fruits they're really great for baking or eating raw uh, very tasty kind of uh, peach ish but a little bit lighter uh, so really great flavor really fun tree to have in your yard they can produce lots and lots of fruit this time of year they're usually in the spring um, so a, kind of a bummer to see this one go um, so let's look at some of the signs of what happened to this tree. Um, so you can see here, obviously the leaves are brown. Um, you can see a lot of the branches are starting to lose their bark here. So you can see the bark's peeling off. Um, and one of the th good signs of, well not a good sign, a, a sign of dead tissue is sort of rigidity. So you can see how when this branch bounces. It's a very rigid bounce, whereas on a living tree, like this crepe myrtle, it kind of uh, bends a little bit more. It has more moisture in the branches, so it's not such a stiff bounce. And that's actually a really good way of telling if a branch is dead or if it's still alive. Now, obviously, if the leaves are dead, um, you know, you've seen, you can see broken branches, and especially if it's very brittle, so you can see when it breaks like that rather than a bend uh, on living tissue tells you that it's actually dead and unfortunately it looks like all of the branches on this tree are in that shape um, so let's take a look around um, see if we can spot some other signs and symptoms of what's going on with this tree um, it had some branches pruned off so you know that's pretty standard nothing out of the ordinary there um, those can be an entry point for disease and decay. Um, none of these seem to be too, too bad. There's a little bit of decay here, but um, nothing excessive. You can see some of these pruning cuts here. Um, but let's look down a little bit lower at the trunk. So we have some issues here. This is probably the most obvious sign uh, that there's something wrong with the tree. So let's start. There's a couple things here. So let's start with these dots here along the tree. So you may have noticed these on a lot of tr trees here in the Southeast. Um, these are from birds that are called sap suckers. They're in the genus Phyrapicus, and they essentially feed off the sap of trees. So they drill these tiny little holes in the bark and feed off the sap that comes out. They do sometimes feed on, you know, insects and other things that are attracted to the sap, uh, but it's primarily the sap that they feed off of. Now, these birds alone don't usually kill a tree. They can have a significant impact. Sometimes it's pretty minor, um, but usually they're not gonna kill the tree alone. The tree can sort of heal over, the wounds aren't too deep, um, usually they're not too dense. But one of the issues is that it can be an entry point for disease. We talk a lot about how trees compartmentalize wounds. They try to seal those wounds off so that they're not open to the air and open to pests and pathogens. That's really the main issue with these, this kind of damage. It's not the damage itself, it's what the damage opens the tree up to. And you can see right here underneath the bark, we have fungus. So this is a major cause of death and disease in trees is fungus. So essentially what happened here, what it looks like happened, uh, is that these sap suckers opened up the tree, they created wounds, and the fungus got inside. And particularly in, with trees in urban environments, they're dealing with a lot of stress, a lot of heat, a lot of pollution, a lot of soil compaction, things that trees in natural areas don't have to deal with. And so all of those stressors combined can kill a tree. And those stressors in particular make it easy for a fungus like this 
to just run rampant. And so we can see if we look down further, you know, here there's no bark left. It's completely gone here. It looks like it's worked its way all the way around the tree. And if you recall from some of our other videos, all of the important parts of a tree are just beneath the bark. That's the cambium, the phloem, the xylem, the things that move the water and nutrients are right beneath the bark. So on the interior, it's mostly just wood. That's a structural function. Uh, it's not actually moving any materials, but everything is happening just beneath the bark. So if everything around the tree here is cut off, it's essentially strangling the tree. So all of the nutrient stores and energy that's being pulled in from the roots can't be transported up the tree because it's been cut off. And the reverse happens as well. All the nutrients, all that sunlight, the leaves are collecting, can't be transported down to the roots for storage either. And so essentially, the connection has been severed by this fungus around the trunk and potentially led to its death. Um, so it's hard to know. There, there may be other factors that have affected it. Um, it could have been undergoing other stress, uh, maybe other damage that happened that, you know, wasn't apparent beforehand. So, so this big section here could have been mower damage. Uh, that's something that's very common in urban areas. And again, a lot of that damage is not necessarily going to kill the tree alone. It's this combination of stressors and factors that can kill the tree. So if it had mechanical damage, had damage from the sap suckers at the top and then the fungus came in as well all of that combined could have been enough stress to kill the tree so this is why we have to take really good care of our trees they're undergoing so many stressors in urban environments and we want to reduce those as much as possible to help keep our trees alive and avoid death of beautiful trees like this so thank you all so much for watching and stay tuned for more videos take care